Shalom, saints. I would like to greet you this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'd like to take our reading for the morning devotion from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Shall we pray? Dear God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. May you bless the reading of your word. Speak to our hearts, Lord, and guide us this day. Be our portion, for we ask it in Jesus' name. I'd like to entitle this little devotion, What is Happiness? As we observe the world around us, as well as the struggles within ourselves, you will become more and more aware of the devastating and deceiving results of sin in the human experience. There are a lot of things which may be said of this, but we want to ponder over just two. The obsession with humans for happiness we're all trying to find it and seek. And the discontent caused by looking for it in the wrong places. In First Timothy chapter 3, the Bible tells us the Apostle Paul told a young pastor named Timothy what would characterize the last days. Verse 1, he says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. That is quite a mouthful that he says there. Now, we're not going to deal with that whole scripture, but just a few things about this passage that I think we should understand. Firstly, when you look at that, is this the correct assessment of our society? Lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience and all those things it's was there is now pronounced the way it is so it is correct now just as we go through that list that Paul provided we see these things all around us maybe in our own family in our own church wherever we might find it it is there we know it is there secondly uh, these people that he describes in those verses are not God-haters or even atheists. In fact, they are religious people. They might even be professing Christians. The Apostle Paul says these people have the appearance of godliness but deny its power. Now, let's not be too quick to dismiss this group and say it's not us, he's not talking about me he's not talking about our church he's not uh, without seeing the deception of professing a faith but living like the world and actually denying the faith by practice that is what they did the third point he says it accurately, accurately describes our current culture lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Praise the Lord. It doesn't take much observation to see this obsession in our world. Look at the money and the time given over to sports, hobbies, recreation, relaxation, pleasures and other forms of entertainment. And Christians are not immune to these sways of the flesh and the devil. Recently we've had the Olympics and countries have spent Billions of rands, dollars, rupees in uh, training these athletes and getting them to be in the peak form. It's an obsession. Cricket, 
soccer world over the sport in boxing the people are so engrossed in these things now it says lovers of pleasure more than lovers of god say you were given a ticket to go to a football match man manchester united playing somebody and it was on a sunday morning when you should have been in church would it be a battle for you to decide i'll go to church lovers of pleasure more than lovers of god if we could create a balance sheet of our lives with two columns would what would it look like if you call it my free time this week one column would list all the hours we gave ourselves over to pursuing personal desires and interests investing in worldly events and activities and seeking personal comfort and enjoyment The other column would list what hours we gave to the Lord in seeking him, reading his word, in prayer, in serving and helping people in need, investing in the spiritual work in our churches and reaching out to the ministry to his people. What would your balance sheet look like? Would it be in the red or would it be in the black? There's a real danger facing Christians real danger that's present we may easily be allured by the siren songs of the world in the pursuit of happiness and pleasure and become like the world in these pursuits today the church has become worldly we sing like the world we act like the world we behave like the world and there's no difference but we are seeking the true happiness in the wrong place We will know quickly if we are Christians seeking satisfaction, pleasure and happiness if it's in the wrong place. Sometimes the wrong place is the church. Now, we will be discontent, joyless and always looking for something new. A new experience, a new conference, a new concert, a new church, a new book, a new relationship, a new gadget, a new whatever and never finding it. Why? God has wired us for happiness and pleasure but he has determined that they will not be found in anything or anyone in the creation but only in the creator the scripture read the lamentation the lord is my portion saith my soul and so we look for happiness to satisfy the flesh our human desires the elements of the flesh the five senses But he says the Lord is my portion say the soul there's a soul within you that needs to find happiness and it cannot find happiness in material physical things he says to the soul that seek it in the Lord is good to them that wait for him to the soul that seek it in are you really seeking humanity has been searching for happiness for thousands of years as long as we are 6000 years we may think of times when we were happy to be with loved ones enjoy a well earned holiday or accomplish something we always wanted to do but our lives seldom overflow with happiness continuously after thousands of years you would think that human beings would have figured out how to be happy or at least have agreed on a definition for the word Unfortunately, happiness is so often seems to be elusive. People often try to find it in all the wrong places. Many times the fall for an artificial happiness that they create with behaviors that give them temporary pleasures. Many people feel happy and carefree lifestyles with themselves at the center. However, when the fun ends and everyone moves on, are they really happy there's only one place to look for true happiness from the god who created us the bible was written to reveal an entire way of life designed to bring peace and of mind and happiness in hebrews 2 the bible says but we see jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor 
that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons into glory. He died for us. He paid the price because he cares for your happiness. Happiness does not consist of how much of the world's goods you own, but how contented you are with the portion that is allotted to you. Happiness does not consist of the things of this world. It consists of eternal things. What makes us happy in our soul? You find you've got to have faith, but you've got to know how to use that faith to make yourself well, to get happiness out of life. If you're born again, everything you need of is the right in you when you're born again. Because the Holy Spirit comes there and that's all you have need of. It's the Holy Spirit, it produces the rest. The Holy Spirit is real. I want to tell you, friends, that quickens your mortal bodies, that gives you joy and happiness and kills your soul. The Holy Spirit is not just a thought. It's not a thinking or whatever, but it's the person, the real person that can come and dwell in you. He wants to dwell in you. What can Christ, you may say, do for me? Christ represents not his law, not his justice. But he represents his mercy, his love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on on him should not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus Christ can give you love. Jesus Christ can give you eternal life. Jesus Christ can give you healing of your body. But healing of your body only lasts you up to the time you die of maybe another illness. Beyond that, it won't help you. But Jesus can help you beyond that. Jesus can give you satisfaction. Jesus can take away your gloom and give you happiness. The law couldn't do that. The Old Testament, the prophets couldn't do that. But ye, ye, him. The church can't do it today. The world can't do it today. Your money can't do it today. Your friends can't do it today. Jesus Christ is the only one that can do it, friends. I think Helen Stainer Rice wrote a poem some time ago. Everybody everywhere seeks happiness, it's true. But finding it and keeping it seems difficult to do. Difficult because we think that happiness is found only in places where wealth and fame abound. So we make that mistake, friends. Now, do you tell me somewhere you can go, some place you can go, something you could do or something you could achieve that would be everlasting? outside of Jesus Christ. Tell me if you build a house, that would be everlasting. You want a bigger house, you want a better house, you want a better neighborhood. Tell me you could build a popularity. Elvis Presley, Muhammad Ali, some people, young people don't even know who they are. That's not eternal. Tell me you could make enough riches that would be eternal where rust and moth that not corrupt. You cannot do it. Nothing outside of Jesus Christ. He is the eternal achievement. And if you've achieved ever so much in your life, you have never achieved the eternal thing yet until you found Jesus Christ. And you've got him in your heart. Shall we pray? Dear God and Heavenly Father, we invite you into our hearts today. We want to find true happiness, true satisfaction in our soul. Lord, we may try to seek it in natural, material things, but we know we come short. Humanity hasn't found the answer, but you are the answer. Bless us, Lord. Come into our hearts. Grant us the victory. Walk with us. Lead us. Guide us. And bless us. We commit all things into your hands, for we ask it. In Jesus' name. Dear friends, may the Lord bless you. May you have a wonderful day. God bless you.